Welcome to a full review of the recent iteration of the Volvo XC60 here as our design and with a special new engine, this one now the mild hybrid. So a while ago Volvo announced going all electric and so on, at least that was what mainstream media was reporting, but the truth is they meant electrification. So not everything pure EV, not everything plug-in hybrid, but also here now the mild hybrid systems. Does it really make sense and does it solve the problem that so far, especially the petrol engines at Volvo, were really high in the fuel consumption? We'll find out for you today here on Autogo Fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. In exterior, interior and the driving experience. Now sit back and relax everything together with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we have the R design today, that means strong spoilers in the lower part and this black dot style grille. Of course there are other grills available if you don't go for the R design. Also adds of course something more to the price. LED headlamps in this Thor's hammer design, they come with mid trim or they are also included then in the higher trims or optional for the base trim levels. Here then we do have them actually. And another R design feature also here, these black accentuations in the lower part. Overall, a very strong look. 4 meters 68, 15 foot 4 or 184 inches is the length. And from which side I'm entering the stage? Today from here, hello. <laughs> then wheel sizes are from 18 to 22 inch. These here are 21 inch wheels. Can the air suspension, the optional one that we have mounted here today, even out this very, very huge wheel comfort-wise? We'll find out in the driving part. Then our design adds the black features here, mirror caps, also the window frames. Overall, again, a pretty simplistic design on the exterior, but I really like that. So the XC60, good in design. In the rear, we have this typical design here of the Volvo Estates or SUVs with this vertical tail lamps here that in this case then in this new generation go around right here. Pretty interesting idea. And then the fake exhaust police. Because this is here an outer tip. Well, I mean, it's not completely fake exhaust because there is something on the inside, but it's definitely that the outer tip is way larger than it actually is. Our design here again with the black accentuations. engines all two liter four cylinders but there is some variation definitely so the new turbo petrol mild hybrids are called b4 5 and 6 so in the very 197 horsepower 250 that's the one you see here and 300 horsepower the first one front wheel drive the second one this one here optional all-wheel drive here 6.9 seconds is the acceleration figure and 300 horsepower always with all-wheel drive but at the diesel side, there are also MFs now, and they're also called B, B4 and 5. So, yeah, not really logical to me. But then you get also D, the normal diesels, non-MF, yeah. Either 150 horsepower or 190 horsepower, and the mild hybrids, 197 or 235 horsepower for the diesels. Yeah, and then there will be plug-in hybrids, T6 and T8, petrol plus electric motor, and then also with charging. But this here today, internal charging, so to say. First of all, door closing sound. Inside of the doors is, let's say, somewhat soft touch. The overall nice handles and so on. Optional bowers and Wilkins sound system that has this special sound 
setting, soon after that, new R design styling is here, this bright fabric, and we also find it on the seats. They are not black, by the way, it's rather a gray tone. I think that's quite, I mean, gray or a little bluish note or something like that. And then what's really not logical is, I mean, here we have the nice R design stamp, but then before you had black Alcantara on the inside, and then some animal skin sadly on the outside, but now it's the other way around. Doesn't make any sense. I mean, the fabric looks nice and feels great, but here where you sweat in summer and where it's cold in winter, you have the animal skin and then outside you have the breathable fabric that makes no sense at all. And also look how the interior finishing is done here. That's really very poorly done. So I recommend when you have them in your market, especially EU markets, Germany and UK, there are fabric seats available, black or fabric leather red mix. And there's also a so-called city weave. There's like a bright fabric leather red mix. We had it in a V60. Here you can also see it, how it looks like. It's special, yes, but it's really awesome as a special design. Sadly, yeah, I have to say, get the past R design version from the previous model year, then you can get at least some Alcantara on the inside. Then aluminum pedals and special floor mats next to the R Design steering wheel. That's pretty cool because it's a little bit thinner. Better to grab that one and also with this R Design batch. And let's get inside. Mid size SUV. So you already have a, let's say, sophisticated feeling in this vehicle with 1m86 or 6 foot 1. You have also enough headroom, even though we have the optional panoramic roof here, which you can also open. I turn on the ignition. And you can also open it quite wide and at least a lot of light in the interior, definitely. Manual control here for the steering wheel. It's also a nice smooth process and goes really wide in and out and up and down and so on. And overall feeling quite cozy here. The sport seats here, they offer a little bit more shoulder support and so on. However, I feel that the base seats or the base comfort seats, they are a little bit more comfortable for long-term runs and so on. I feel they adapt a little bit better to the body, although they are a little bit more open. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it really depends probably on the body style, but the other seats I've been testing here in the XC60 were to my ergonomics a little bit better, definitely. Here, the electric control, also here for the front of the seat, by the way, so you can here put the front part more in or out than if you like. Interior overview with a beautiful Scandinavian design. Here, this swimming structure. Um, this is here somewhat, and this is also somewhat soft touch. So um, not super soft, but also not hard pack. Something in between. I think it's totally fine. Here, the option bar also works and sound system with the additional speaker right there. And on the right side, you can also see this silhouette of the Swedish flag. Some nice detail. Steering wheel in the R design, a little bit slimmer and I think over a better grip. Then you also have the shifting pedals if you want to shift manual with this automatic gearbox here. 12 inch digital instruments standard, right side 9 inch screen in the vertical way layout. Soon more details to that. One thing in advance when we pick here, you know, the climate unit, we can use the voice control while driving. I'll show that while driving. But other than that, you have to click on that and then either use this here or the sliding function or click already right here. So it's not too good to do that while driving, unless you're someone who sets 22 degrees Celsius and AC auto anyway. Well, then in the lower part, you still have a manual volume knob. I like that. And it's also a very interesting one haptically. It has this diamond style. Not too many buttons left. And in the lower console here, you can either close everything. That's cleaner then. Here we go. Or open the front for a small copy over here then for some cup holders. This automatic shifting lever here. Yeah, we also have that here now in the XC90, uh, sorry, in the, in the XC60, yes. Um, and the bad thing is when you go for reverse, then we also see the reverse camera. And then to G mode again, once, twice. You cannot go over the neutral or like pull further back or pull or push further in the front and then it hops over. No, always one, two, one, two. One, two, and that's, I think, a little bit annoying. Here, the rear camera, we can also see this is fake drone view from above, but we can also then pick different cameras, for example, the front view camera or then the rear view camera and so on. It's a not very nice system. Last but not least, here I see the drive mode selector, different drive modes, you have to press it and then roll. That's also not too good to control while driving and then open the armrests. And then there are two USB supplies, one for the connection to the phone 
with the infotainment system. And speaking of the infotainment system, here once more with the camera, here then for example the rear view and the resolution is also quite good. So then on the top part you can go to the settings and then that you can swipe left and then you can for example activate the headrest fold. I'll talk about that fun feature very soon. Or head up display adjustments and so on. And here are all of the assistance systems you could theoretically deactivate. On the right layer, then you can access the Apple CarPlay or the sound experience. And this is so cool. Here I always drive with a concert hall mode in the Bausenbrücken sound system. Studio is more coming from the front. Um, also with stage, for example, and concert hall is really like this surround. This is really very cool. And you already saw I can access the Apple CarPlay here or then also here in, the, in this main menu, which has the main stuff right here. Um, no device can be paired with the system without that. Yeah, that's probably because I'm in flight mode. Ah, no, that's the, the Bluetooth, and then here that the Apple Car is appearing. And um, it really has a deep surround sound, really cool stuff. So especially for electronic music or for classical music, um, that's really the way to go. You see here the Apple CarPlay integration, then in this case, um, yeah, it goes here over the screen, and then you also have the other stuff, and then the GPS here. You can also make it full screen. Here we are, good to read. Responsiveness is somewhat okay, could be a little bit better. And for routing the direction, it's okay, nothing fancy actually, but does the job. And here at the steering wheel, left side, then I control the cruise control. Also the pilot assist, soon talking about that while driving. On the right side, I can activate the voice control, volume up and down, or also next song title. And here, to control the gauges here, at least a little bit like for trip meter and stuff. And we can only see everything of the virtual instruments when we turn on the engine like this. Then we have right side RPM, left side speed, digital speed as well. In the middle part, some additional info like, you know, who doesn't have a seatbelt on at the moment, for example. Or you can also have some GPS information in there. That's also possible. And this head-up display will give me the speed or the allowed speed. And also some GPS arrows when we have a route set. Now getting to the rear. Actually, the inside of the doors is as... I mean, it's not super soft, but as soft as in the very front part. So I think it's soft enough. Bright fabric inserts. Leg room wise here, I think it's quite a good. I mean, we have enough space here, definitely for four tall adults. The rear bench falls a little bit downwards. If you compare, by the way, the Volvo XC40, that's better as for, you know, this exterior interior relation. So we have as much leg room as in the XC40 here. The difference is here, the XC60 has a longer trunk. That's the main difference. Then headroom here, I have to put that head restraint up again. Headroom here gets pretty close, but still okay. You would have more if you leave out the panoramic roof. But then from the rear, you have a great view too. The panoramic roof, definitely. We have a separate climbing unit here for the rear, if you like. Then special features also for the outside seats. We have isofix, but then also here, this integrated child seat, so to say. And put it up like this. So that's a very good idea. You do flip the seats from here, actually. And then what's quite interesting is that the head restraint here, they fall down automatically. And you can also release them from the infotainment system here, these head restraints, that you can have a better look than from the front to the rear. Um, but there's no sensor inbuilt that it doesn't go down when someone's sitting there. We tested that out. <laughs> there's that. It's an old running gag at Autofuel. And yeah, I was quite hit at the head by that. So Michelle and I tested it out quite, quite some time ago. Then here, armrest. You can put out a ski hatch here as well. Cup holders, they're quite large and also somewhat adaptive here with these rubber lips. And in the middle console here also, we have a full power supply. So what about that trunk area? Let's take a look at that. Electric tailgate. Also put some luggage inside. You can see the dimensions right there. And the length here is about a meter and the width is actually way more than a meter. So that's excellent. So this is here, I mean, in the lowest part, not, but in the upper part, it's like one meter and 15. That's really decent. Below this cover here, it's about 50 centimeters. So you can also fit it in a vertical way, for example. The only thing here is this is absolutely manual. And also um, this upper position here, yeah, it would be too good if that flips up automatically and then close again. 
recently had it for example in the Audi A6 um, Avant or Estate but here it's all manual so sometimes I forget and it leaves open like this so I mean this car here with all the extras included as we have standing here now almost 80,000 euros and then it's not possible to have this one here now with a little help hmm, that's a little disappointing and also when we want to flip the seats here nothing we can really do have to go around for that here we go then these the head restraints also flip and this is a one third two third split you can also use that ski hatch if you like and the final lengthen here to the front seat about one meters and 80. And by the way you can also put that one not in the highest position but save it that doesn't go up too far for example in the basement garage so here this would be the maximum top position and child safety test yeah well done Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Volvo XC60, our design, optional air suspension, B5 petrol, so it's a turbo petrol engine, B5 with the new mild hybrid, new MHF system, in this case the 250 horsepower version. So what about that one? What do you realize what's different from the usual petrol so far? Well the first thing I could notice is when you're running toward the traffic light and you're already very very slow so like there's like two seconds become before you come into a full stop then the car already shuts down the engine and is relying on this mild hybrid system on the battery and there's not a huge battery in this mild hybrid systems but that way the stop start function can react or be activated a little bit earlier and that you know in the long run might be then some you know something for fuel saving i also see a small battery symbol here in the digital instruments and when i actually lift the throttle and then go on the brakes not necessarily when i lift the throttle and the car is just rolling because it's more efficient but when i do oh, that's a xc60 in this uh, beige tone uh what's it called luminous sand at least it was called that way in the xc90 not sure how is it also called that way in the xc60 Oh, there's a nice E30 convertible behind us. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm always commenting also on other cars I see when reviewing a car. So I can see actually when some recuperation is happening and that energy is then, for example, being used again for electric consumers and also for, you know, for this buffer, basically, for a little bit, you know, helping the combustion engine and also turning it off earlier for example, then in this stop-start situations. If this will have a big effect on the fuel economy, we'll tell you at the end of the review when we have been driving a little bit further. In general, there was a big problem with Volvo that they are, especially their petrol engines were consuming too much fuel. So that could be a step forward, we'll find out. In general, about the XC60, it's a good compromise because it's not too large on the exterior, but already on the interior, we have a good upright full SUV size feeling on the, on the mid-size SUV segment. At Volvo the case is that the XC40 comes very close because it is really high for a small SUV segment where for example there is a bigger step between the Mercedes GLC and the Mercedes, Mercedes GLA. Here between the XC60 and the XC40 they don't feel too different actually. Again that's just because the XC40 feels so big SUV-ish already because it's really high. I think that's actually quite good. However, here in the XC60, X60 of course, a little bit, you know, calmer when running straight, longer wheelbase, you have a little bit more trunk available and so on and so on. But of course, the XC40 would be the better price performance and the better package. However, here in the XC60, you always have a good comfortable ride, again, with the you know, good seating position and so on. Uh, the steering is rather dead, let's take it that way. Um, so it's completely artificial it's easy to see yes but it doesn't convey a good feeling of what you're doing on the road when you're in the driving mode at the moment in this eco drive there's comfort dynamic and there's also off-road at, at slow speeds to pump up the air suspension dynamic mode here gives a little bit more resistance but still mm, 
it doesn't really change the characteristic of the car. So um, steering feeling, and therefore also then connect the like the felt agility is not that good. It's also not the focus of this vehicle. It's supposed to be comfortable. If you compare this air suspension here with an air suspension, for example, in the Mercedes GLC, the GLC one is more floating like, softer, more comfortable, definitely. If you compare it to one in the Audi Q5, um, Audi more seeks the compromise between comfort and sportiness. You could rather compare that, but you feel that the air suspension they have here is a little bit worse. So it's overall, you know, nice and okay and so on. But it's not that you will say, oh, it's the best air suspension I've been ridden in this very segment. For an air suspension, I'm actually even a little bit disappointed, so to say. It also reacts then a little bit on the, on the driving modes. Um, but still, I mean, you know, in this eco or comfort mode, yeah, should be a little bit better, definitely. So now we're heading on to the motorway slowly and give you a different different aspect about that vehicle. Um, sometimes, you know, getting even a little bit rough, although we have the air suspension. And, however, it's the same also when you go with the other suspensions. But, um, yeah, I'm not really sure if it's then so worth it to go for that one in, in this vehicle here. The overview is very good. I like that frameless rear mirror mirror there are good overview to the rear also the front and the side um, it doesn't have like a super design oriented building form on the exterior and that gives us a good overview from the interior to the outside I really like that and Volvo gives me also a calm feeling that's also what Volvo is famous for you relax you don't feel like you need to race someone and yeah I think that's also the case why this a recent discussion about the speed limit of 180 kilometers an hour. It's a German discussion only because nowhere else in the world are you allowed to drive that fast. And then even in Germany, like, when do you have the possibility to do that? It's, I mean, is it a motorway part where it's allowed? And also, like, then is it not full of traffic and so on? And then I don't know so many Volvo drivers who would say, like, I'm, I want to drive 220 kilometers an hour, like, for hours or so. So I don't think it's really a big issue for Volvo customers. I think just, you know, some people are exaggerating the impact of that decision. I think it's, you know, it's actually quite okay. I mean, 180 kilometers an hour is totally enough. And everyone else outside driving is like, what is he talking about? Like, what's the discussion? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Now we're getting to the dynamic mode. Let's see about the performance right there. And let's go. So that was about 55 to 85 something. You can see we do have enough power. It doesn't feel too too powerful, however. Yeah, that's it. Um, also not too bad, but you know, it's um, they, they you all use these, um, besides this one exception there in the XC40, everything is set on these two liter four cylinders and also um, front wheel drive or like the the overdrive and then always front plus rear on demand. So it doesn't make too much of a difference here in this vehicle if you pick it front wheel drive or all wheel drive. The smaller engines are just front wheel drive and the bigger ones and like or let's say middle ones you can pick it and the big ones then automatically come with all wheel drive. And when I hit the throttle a little bit more I feel that I also get pushed from the rear a little bit. Cruise control here on the left side actually and you can switch it out, if you have that option, to the pilot assist. And that would be then the, let's say, active lane keeping assist. So that not only the speed is being ruled, but also what is done, you know, left and right. And let's see again, set to 80 kilometers an hour. This would be the cruising control, see here, no intervention. And then let's put it, what's with the Brabus Mercedes GP? <laughs> so let's put it to the pilot assist and see. Yeah, you can see, I'm not doing that in steering wheel at the moment. That's the car. So it does react here also to the construction side lanes. Oh, now it's tricky. Left lane yellow, right now, that they didn't realize that. That's a tricky one. Left yellow, right wide. Guess the car doesn't really know what to do then. Hmm. 
But does it really work on colors? That's a tough question, right? Or is it colorblind? It's, hmm, interesting. So, but the first step was done, but you see that the steering was really nervous in keeping the lane. And I'll try that again when the yellow lines are gone and we're having just the standard wide lines and a little bit wider, like the standard motorway situation. And see how that one plays out. Noise insulation here at about 80 kilometers an hour, so like 50 miles an hour. So quite decent. And again, I like where this car is giving me this very calm feeling. Like, Thomas, relax. Everything's going to be good. Those guys in Sweden will take care of you. <laughs> Just drive. <laughs> so, going to the right lane. There's the blind spot monitor integrated in these side mirrors in a very nice way, but there's no traffic here today. It's also a good thing, so no one's overtaking us at the moment. So, let's put here to 100 kilometers now. And let's see. Pilot assist. Steering wheel is green as a symbol. I see that in the instruments and also in the head up display. And now, I'm not steering, just let the car do the stuff. Of course, holding on to steering because that's mandatory. And now here, outside the concession lanes, it's actually better, not too nervous now from, from steering wheel. Yeah, I think that's well done now. So, like that pilot assist, that can be quite relaxing then on the longer ride and so on. Yeah, I think happy with that. So, now getting off the motorway until we get on again because I want to show you one more you know, performance acceleration. What is this engine able to perform? And then we also drive a little bit faster. See how about the noise insulation there. And no, we won't go faster than 180 kilometers now. And in this case, we also can't. <laughs> yeah. Onto a very, very rare type. Yeah, and the Mazda MX-30, the new electric vehicle. That one could not drive that fast either, actually. So, interesting. I think you can open the sunblind here as well, right? I have a little more light in my face. <laughs> so now, dynamic mode. Let's go to dynamic mode, and let's accelerate from 50 kilometers an hour. Let's see. I have to wait a little bit. No, let's go. That's 150 kilometers an hour, that shall be enough for this vehicle, it's no race vehicle and here at about 150, I think it's still reasonably silent, so satisfied with that. And now let's drop it down to a more reasonable motorway speed and that would be about 130 kilometers an hour. That's about 80 miles an hour and I think that's, you know, totally acceptable, don't have to raise my voice that much. Not the most silent vehicle in the segment, but also not super loud. There's a nice 718 Boxster right here. Oh, driving the open top is really cool. Not too much fun on the motorway though, more on you know, countryside roads and so on. Probably you've already seen the blind spot monitor. And now I'll induce that once more with that Mini that's going to overtake us. Seen our Mini John Cooper Works GP review by the way? There is blind spot monitor. Very nice integration, like like in this swing, like this is almost like boomerang style. Things really good. Good feeling in the brakes as well. So and you know consumption wise, of course, now I did like the big acceleration. So I'll reset the once more now because I always like to state like a minimum consumption and a maximum consumption, so um, that you can also have a feeling for the you know for the span and usually then the truth in the middle um, or you at least know then like what the car is capable of you know to have as a consumption for, for a minimum. Now we're heading down into a tunnel and you can see also how the car looks like at night from the interior. Here we are. There's no special ambient lighting here. That would have been cool definitely. You see screen and digital instruments mainly. From that engine sound, by the way, it's, you know, so next to the general good noise insulation, I think the engine itself doesn't sound too good, sometimes a little bit 
aggravated or something. Um, <laughs> we like the first time I started now again. Um, I didn't drive the XC64 for quite a long time now. I thought, like, oh wait a minute, I have to check that it's really not the diesel. I get checked in like the, um, you know, like the RPM or look under the hood or check the papers. Is that the diesel? Because I mean, really, like this petrol sounds a little bit awkward diesel-like, you know. It's not the diesel. It's definitely not the diesel here, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, but that's also one thing with these new B namings. Again, I told you earlier, the B can be a petrol and a diesel. It's like, why? Why would you do that? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes strange decisions, definitely, by the car manufacturers, but that's the way it is. So, we're getting off the motorway here once again. And I think, yeah, just again, quite relaxed. Um, as for the seats here, by the way, longer term, um, you know, aside from the ethical aspect here with the R design seats, I would also comfort wise go, if that's possible in your market, um, it should be in most markets for the, like, let's say either the base seat or then like the uh, Momentum Pro seat. It's definitely more, more comfortable a long term run. Um, especially like the combination with the with the city fave seats because the seat form is somehow also more suitable for you know for a taller body. I mean, some some might argue like sports is better for, you, for me or something. It can be. I just can state what's like what's like the best for me, and definitely feeling more comfortable in the other seats. The um, you know the standard comfort seats to me they are so comfortable that I would think I can like go miles and miles and miles. They're also quite decent here, but not as comfortable as the other ones. So, yeah, just want to give that experience because we always have the chance to drive then a couple of different versions and trims throughout the lifetime of a vehicle, and then we can also pass that on to you. So, what did we learn today? By the way, very important to talk about that. These here are 21 inch wheels. And this is surely also one of the reasons why I criticize the comfort here of this vehicle today. So, if you want more comfort in this car, then don't pick, I mean, never go for the 22 inch wheel in this vehicle. Don't do it. <laughs> 21 inch, I think, I mean, looks definitely cool, but still too big as for comfort features. Sometimes we have it that the air suspension evens that effect out. It's not the case here. So, if you really want to feel that air suspension, you need a combination, combination at least 18 inch wheels. You know, and if you, um, I think so, you know, so, um, yeah, 18, 18 might look then too small for some, 20 might still work. Shall we take a compromise? 19? Okay, that's fine for you. It's like let's say let's put 19 on 19 inch on on the, on the exterior that should still look fine and at the same time we should have a little bit more comfort than no matter which suspension we have actually uh, you know gone for once again um, using the pilot assist and you know the good thing here is also that you can pick it at the steering wheel left side quite easily so if you at some some point like there's a road where you say like ah that's really annoying don't want to have that side assist, let's put that out. It's no problem, just like one clink here with the left thumb, you don't have to search deep in the menu right there, that's it, and then you have the normal cruise control and just steer yourself. I think that's also a quite good solution. But adjusting the speed here while driving actually, mm, yeah, you know, it is possible, but I always have to look at it. Um, then again, probably makes sense to use the voice control for that. Set temperature to 21 degrees. Temperature set to 21 degrees. Yeah, so that would be one possibility to just look ahead and use the voice control to control that. At least we do have that. And guys, I'm really surprised. I mean, that's really good what we have here so far. I mean, even if I like zeroed out the consumption meter, I could hardly get a Volvo petrol engine like below. I really had to work it to get it like one digit figure, like maybe nine liters on one kilometers. 
quite often it was about 10 or something. And I did the first test like this morning already and now like a second one again. And when we're not flooring it out, when we want to score the minimum consumption, we can now indeed reach about 7 liters on 100 kilometers. And I think that's actually quite decent, especially because we had some situations where we rolled a little bit and then the recuperation set in and so on. So sometimes MF systems seem to work, sometimes they don't work that well. In this case here, I think we definitely have a step forward with this MF system. Nice, nice. And now to our conclusion for today with the Volvo XC60 B5, the MHEV system here in this petrol engine. Our design definitely looks very fancy from the exterior. In general, the design of the XC60 is very likable. The R design, of course, adds a sporty feature. However, the best option to go for is just Momentum or Momentum Pro, if that's available in your market, because it's the best price-performance ratio here. The R design gets really expensive, and on the inside, then, even more animal skin use for the R design. So if you're in a market where you can get the fabric leatherette mix or the city weave seats, then you should go for that. As for engines, really interesting here, because, indeed, the MHEV system does work. So. So far, we had like consumptions of about 9 liters on 100 kilometers, 26 mpg, 31 mpg UK. Now we're here at about 7 liters on 100 kilometers, so about 34 mpg US, 41 mpg UK. And that's definitely a big improvement. You can really use this recuperation, it seems. And as for the comfort in the riding, the wheel choice really matters here with the 21 inch wheels that really reduce the comfort, and we couldn't really profit from this nice air suspension so 20 inch max i would really go better 19 inch that's still i think the best compromise between the looks and the comfort if you want even more comfort then you can go even smaller maybe with 18 inch so what are you thinking about our results here for today with the volvo xc60 there are other xc60 reviews available also the smaller one the xc40 or the xc90 and of course the competitors bmw x3 mercedes glc audi q5 and so on tune into these reviews. We always link some in the video description or in the pinned comment. So see you there.